Over the years, Japanese car manufacturers have made many quick cars, but arguably only one supercar. Now produced in tiny numbers, this car has changed very little over the last 11 years. This week, we get to grips with the Honda NSX. The NSX project started in 1984, when Honda's Formula One engine program started showing promise. Honda's reputation as one of the most technologically advanced car makers in the world was known in competition circles, but not by the majority of road car customers. Honda needed a car that would bridge the gap between Formula One and their Accords and Civics. The NSX was Honda's answer. Launched in Japan in 1990, it had the performance and the price to take on the Porsche 911 and Ferrari's 348 TV. Now your Skylines and your Evos may have supercar performance, but those plasticky afterthought spoilers and kits are not going to tempt your average Ferrari owner from their cars, so the NSX had to look the part. At launch, European journalists criticised the car's aluminium clad appearance as too Japanese. Ten years on and the car's looks are definitely starting to show their age. You won't find angles like these on modern Porsches and Ferraris. Now another innovation first for the NSX was the first use of a production aluminium chassis. Now other manufacturers might have since caught on to the benefits, but in 1990 Honda led the way. And as a result, the weight of the NSX was well down on that of its rivals. Now originally this car had a 3 litre V6 engine which generated 270 brake horsepower, but in 1997 it was slightly revised to give it 3.2 litres and an extra 20 brake horsepower, which even with my maths gives you 290. Enough to propel this Far Eastern missile from 0 to 60 in about 5 seconds, and if you've got the balls, on up to a top whack of 175 miles per hour. So on paper, the NSX was very quick, quick enough to take on the establishment. But what really upset the supercar fraternity was that the NSX was easy to drive. At the time, it was beneficial to be a fully paid up member of the superhero club to be able to drive a 911 or a 348 anywhere near their limit. But not so the NSX. Driving it was like driving, well, a Honda Civic. So someone at Porsche and Ferrari was bound to be upset. Well, they might be upset if Honda could actually shift many NSXs. True, Porsches and Ferraris are now far easier to drive than they were 10 years ago. But in the last 11 years, Honda has sold around 18,000 NSXs. 8,400 of those were in the first full year of production. In 1998, when Ferrari sold over 2,000 F355s, Honda built only 494 NSXs to meet the dying demand. So is this NSX a great car ignored because it's hiding behind the wrong badge? Or is it time Honda put this old timer to bed? Find out at the end of the show when I'll be putting the car through its paces.